and welcome to our new lesson, lesson three. Today we are going to read a text called The Sabbath. Remember, you will read with me the words that are highlighted like this. So we will read these ones together and I will read what is not highlighted. Are you ready to read together? So I will start alone and then let's read together. I will start. Mr. Lopez started the class by reminding the students of their celebration the previous week. He explained that there are lots of celebrations in the Bible. Let's read together. The Sabbath is a day that God set aside for us to rest and worship him. It is a day to celebrate God's blessings. Very good. He then asked the class to open their Bible to Genesis 2, 2 to 3. He read, By the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Mr. Lopez asked where else in the Bible the Sabbath is mentioned. Let's read together. Micah raised his hand. When Mr. Lopez called on him, he said quietly, It is in the Ten Commandments, and Jesus talked about it too. Mr. Lopez agreed and said that the Sabbath was mentioned so many times in the Bible, they wouldn't have time to read all the verses, even if they spent the whole class reading them. The class turned to the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20. Mr. Lopez read verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. As the class was dismissed, Mr. Lopez challenged the students to find out what Jesus had to say about the Sabbath. Micah, Claire and all the students were eager to study and talk about it in next week's class. Great! Thank you very much for reading these. That was great. Now let's look at the narration practice. First question. How did Mr. Lopez start the class? Do you remember how he started the class? He reminded the students of their celebration the previous week. Do you remember what celebration it was? Move up day, okay. And this time, what did the students learn about? Yes, they learned about the Sabbath. And number three, what were the students going to study before the next class? They were going to study what Jesus had to say about the Sabbath. Okay, very good. Now let's turn to the next page, page 38 together. This page, you can do it alone. This is copy work. You will have to copy Genesis 2 verse 3 over here and you will have some sight words to practice. 
you need to use your memorization cards for that. So for this page, you can do it alone. You can pause the video if you want to do that now, and we will continue to the next page. So you can pause the video or just continue with me. Now we are on page 39 and we are going to talk about pronouns. Do you remember what a proper noun is? It names a noun. The word I is a special type of proper noun called a pronoun. So I written like this. I, I am or I have, for example. A pronoun takes the place of a noun. We use a capital letter whenever we use the word I in a sentence. So it is never like this when we write I. So try writing a sentence here using I as a pronoun. You can write any sentence. Are you ready? Here's my sentence. I am happy. So it's okay if you wrote something else as long as there is I. And remember to put a punctuation mark at the end. And today we are going to study singular and plural pronouns. So what does singular and plural means? Singular means one and plural means more than one. So it means that singular is just one person. Plural, like here, it is more than one. Could be two, for example, or three or four. So yes, more than one person. So what are the singular pronouns? We have I, me, you, he, him, she, her, it. And then plural, we, they, them, us. We have more than one person here. If I say we are going to the park, it's not just one person, but it is me and someone else. So, for example, I could say John and Mark went to the park. If I want to use a pronoun instead of John and Mark, if I use one of these, which one can I use instead of John and Mark? So, mm, went to the park. What can I say? Can I say we? No because I'm not going to the park. Can I say they? Yes, I can. So here we can say they went to the park. So now we are going to do the same thing here. Here are some words or names that are underlined and you need to write here what is the correct pronoun. Remember, you can first look, is there only one person or is there more than one person? If there is only one person, you can find the pronoun in here. If there is more than one, you can find it here. 
So let's look at the first one together. Mr. Lopez started the class. Is it one person or more than one person, Mr. Lopez? One person. Okay, so it's here somewhere. Mr. Lopez, can I say she? She started the class? No, right? Because it's Mr. So it can't be she. What is it then? Yes, it is. He. He started the class. Very good. Okay, now you can try to do number two and three alone. And then we will check your answers. If you need time for this, you can pause the video. And if you already finished, you can check the answers with me. So pause the video now if you didn't finish. Are you ready for the answers? Let's have a look. So the number two, Claire read her Bible. She read her Bible. Only one person. And number three, Micah and Claire were late for class. So this is more than one person, plural. So they, they were late for class. Very good. Let's move on to the next page together. On page 40, here are some sentences. And I want you to circle the pronouns in each sentence. Whenever you see a pronoun, circle it. So let's do number four together. I will give you an apple. Where are the pronouns? What should we circle? We can circle I and we can circle you. Okay, the next one, number five, he will say a prayer before lunch. Where is the pronoun or the pronouns? Yes, it is here. Now try to do six until 10, all of these on your own, and then we will check the answers. You can pause the video to do this. And then when you're ready, let's check together. Are you ready to check the answers? If you're not, you can pause the video. So let's check. Number six, hand me the cup. Seven, pass the plates to them. Eight, they will enjoy the meal. Nine, we are full. And ten, she sent us to wash the dishes. Great, okay. Now we have one more thing on this page. Write a sentence using a plural pronoun. So if you use a plural pronoun, is it with one person or more than one person? It is with more than one person. So in your sentence, there should be at least two people. So it could be we or they, them, 
us. Okay? So, take a bit of time to write your sentence and then we will check together. Are you ready to check? If you need more time, you can pause the video. Let's check together. Here I have just an example. They are eating chicken. So where is my plural pronoun? It is here. And remember, there is a punctuation mark at the end. Here I have a period. Very good. Now the next page, we will not do it together. You can do it on your own. You need to copy the days of the week. So you just need to write down on the lines what the days are. So you can do that. And I will go to page 42. So on page 42, this is the reading comprehension. You need to read pages 14 to 15 of 101 favorite stories from the Bible. We will not read it together. If you can, you can read it with someone else, your, one of your parents or a friend, and then answer the questions on page 15. When you finish, you can fill in the paper and also copy the picture. I am going to page 43 now. On this page, we are going to do some spelling practice. Long A sound words. We are going to learn how to spell these words, which have a long A pattern in them. Let's read them together. Away. Pray. Today. Brain. Nail. Raise. Sail. Game. State. Take. Good. Now, in this exercise, you need to put the spelling words in alphabetical order using the first letter of each word. So, let's underline the first letters so that you see them. So, we have A, P, T, B, N, R, S, G, S, T. So when you see the letters underlined, what, what word do you think will be the first one here in alphabetical order? So the first word starts with the letter that is closest to here. Do you see the word? Do we have a word that starts in A? Yes, we have the word away. Okay, great. So we can write here. Away, very good. Then we need to see what is the next letter. Is there any B coming after? Yes, we have brain. So it will be the next one. 
What happens if we have two letters that are the same? The same first letter like today and take. What do we do? Do we write them on the same line? No, we need to look at the next letter. So here we have letter O and here letter A. So between O and A, which one is the first one? A is here, O is here. A is the first one, of course. So that means take will be before today. Okay? So, now you can have time to write all the words and when you finish, we will check together your answers. So you can pause the video to do this and then let's check together. Did you finish writing your words? Very good. Okay, if you didn't finish, still pause the video. But if you finished, let's check the answers. Here are the answers. First we have away, then brain, game, nail, pray, raise, Sale, state. So here you see we have in we have the same letter S S, but then we have A, then we have T. A is here, T is here. What comes before? A comes before. So sale is before state, and then take and today. Again, we have A and O, A and O, A is before O, so it comes before. Did you get it right? Good. Okay, so let's move on to the next page then. This is our last page together. Write a fun sentence using at least two of your spelling words. Be sure to start your sentence with a capital letter and end it with a punctuation mark. So you can choose two spelling words from the words that you just wrote on the other page. So you can have a bit of time to do that. Here is an example. We will play a game today. Can you see what are the spelling words? The spelling words are game and today. So you can choose other spelling words and you can make your sentence. When you finish that, you can write your spelling words on note cards. Write one word on each card and then you can also create some flashcards with your words. Okay, so remember to finish your sentence and write your note cards. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you in the next lesson, in lesson four. <laughs>
what is highlighted and I will read this part. Are you ready to read it? Okay, let's go. We have a little garden, a garden of our own. And every day we water there the seeds that we have sown. We love our little garden and tend it with such care. You will not find a faded leaf or a blighted blossom there. Very good. Did you like this poem? It sounds nice, right? Were there any words that you didn't understand? If there was a word you didn't understand, then just circle it. Let's move to narration practice. Do you know who wrote the poem? Do you see any name somewhere? Here is the name of the author. Can you read it? Beatrix Potter. Yes, very good. What is the poem about? It's about the little garden. You can see also in this picture. Number three. Each section of the poem is called a stanza. There are two stanzas in this poem. So this is one stanza and this is another stanza. So there are two. One, two. Which stanza is your favorite and why? Do you like this one more or this one? Which one do you like? I think my favorite is the first one. I like the way that it sounds. Number four. Explain how this poem makes you feel. How does this poem make you feel when you hear it or when you read it? For me, it makes me feel happy and it makes me feel warm. All right, now let's move to the next page together. Are you ready? Let's go. So on this page, you will have some memorization so you can try to memorize one stanza from the poem. You can memorize the first one or the second one. You can decide. And then when you finish, there is a little bit of butterfly fun. So on your page, there are many butterflies and you need to color the butterflies that are the same. So for example, here there are three butterflies. Do you see what butterflies are the same? Is this and this the same? No, because this one has two dark dots here and here and one white one here. But this one has one black dot here, a big one, and it's different. What about this and this? Yes, they're the same. So we can color them in the same color. You can choose your color. And then if you see a butterfly who doesn't have a pair or a twin, you can color it any color that you like. So you can choose what color it should be. I will choose green for this one. Okay, so you can do this on this page. You can pause the video to do that. And I will already move to the next page.
Today we are also going to talk about plural nouns, s and es. So one of something is called a singular noun, and more than one of something is called a plural noun. So do you remember how we make a plural noun by adding s and es to the end of the word? Many nouns can be made plural by adding s. So if the noun ends in s, ss, sh, ch, or x, we need to add es. But if the noun doesn't end in these letters, we only add s. Let's let's do an example together. Here is a noun in singular. So there is only one of, of this. There's only one kid. How do I write this in the plural? So here there's one kid. What about if there are two? What do I add? Do I add S or ES? What is the ending? D. So S, 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 H, C, H or X. There is no D. So we don't add ES, we add S. Yes, very good. S. One kid, two kids. Now let's look at an other example. It's very similar but different. What is this? One kiss. Yes, right. So one kiss. What about if we have two? What do we do? What is the ending? The ending is SS. Do you see it anywhere? Yes, it's here. So what happens if we have SS? We add ES. Yes. So kisses. Two kids, two kisses. Great. So in this ne next exercise, you need to really check what is the end letter of the word. Let's do the first one together. Number one, bus. What is the last letter? S, right? So here we have S. And what happens? We add ES. Okay, so we can write here buses. Buses. Good. Do you want to do number two together also? Orphan. What letter? N. There is no N here, so what is it? Just S. Great. Now your turn. Try to do three, four, five, six, seven, eight alone. And then try to write a sentence using a plural noun. So you can choose one of these nouns in the plural and write a sentence with them. So I'll give you a bit of time to do that. You can pause the video to do this and then when you are ready, let's look at the answers together. So pause the video now. Did you finish? If you have finished, let's check the answers together. So here we have churches ends in ch, which is here. Then boxes. Again, here we have x, which is here. Smile, smiles. E, 
there is no e. Bush, bushes, it ends in sh. So, like here, hands, d, there's no d, so s. Mess, ss, so es, like kiss and kisses. Did you also write your sentence? My sentence is, my hands are clean and I have, what is this? I have a punctuation mark and I have a capital letter at the beginning. Do you have that too? Very good. Next, you can do the next page. This is about the months of the year. So you just need to write down on the lines. You need to copy the months that are already written. So just copy what is on your page. We don't need to do this together. So you can do this on your own. If you need to do it, you can pause the video or stop the video and I will continue on the next page. This is something just for fun. So use your finger and trace the road in front of the blue bus, the yellow car and the red car. See if you can answer these questions. Number one, which car ends up at the drive-in for a hamburger? Which car ends up at the ball field? And which one will end up at the pool? So you can do this and then you can let me know your answers and we will check together. You can pause the video if you need time to do this and then let's check together. So pause the video. Are you ready for the answers? Okay, good. If you're not ready, then pause the video. And now let's have a look at the answers. So which car ends up at the drive-in for a hamburger? It's the red car. Yes. Which ends up at the ball field? The blue, the blue one. And which one will end up at the pool? It is the yellow car. Great. Was it fun? Nice. Okay, let's go now to the next page, page 50. So again, here you have the reading comprehension. You can read pages 16 to 17 of 101 favorite stories from the Bible. So your other book. Um, we're not going to read this together. You can maybe read with someone else or with a friend or try to read on your own and then answer the questions on page 17. When you finish that, you can do also this page and copy the picture on the page. So you can pause the video to do this or stop the video and I will continue to the next page. Now we move to spelling practice. Today we will talk about long E sound words. So let's learn how to spell these words. Let's first read them together. Baby, breeze, clean, easy, keep, meal, need, Seat, sleep, theme. Great. Now find the spelling words in the word search. So you can look across, so horizontally this way and down. When you finish, we will check the answers together. So you can pause the video 
and you can try to find these words in the word puzzle. Did you finish searching the words? Are you ready? Okay, if you finished, let's check the answers. And if you didn't finish, please pause the video and try to finish. Okay, let's look at the answers. Did you get everything? Good job. You can take a bit more time to do this, to check if you need to. And I will already move to page 52. So if you need, you can pause the video. And if everything is fine, you can follow. So the last thing we're going to do together, write a fun sentence using at least two of your spelling words. Be sure to start your sentence with a capital letter and end it with a punctuation mark. Okay, so you can use two of the spelling words that we just saw in the word search. Here is a sentence as an example. Let the baby sleep. What are the spelling words? Do you see them? Yes, it is baby and sleep. And you see, I put the punctuation mark here and I have a capital letter. So remember to do the same. And now you can try to find two other words from, from the previous page. Very good. Now, after you do this, you can also do optional activities. You can write your spelling words here still, or you can practice more and also write them on note cards. Um, and at the end, if you want, you can also create your own dictionary. So that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you in lesson five. Hello and welcome to lesson five. Today we are going to start with a text again about the trumpet. So let's see what all this is about. Remember, you can read with me the highlighted sentences and then you can just follow these ones when I speak. You don't have to read them. Are you ready to start? Let's start together. What was that loud sound? It sounded almost like a trumpet. It got louder as the children walked closer to their Sunday school class. Micah and Claire were surprised to see Mr. Lopez blowing into a strange looking horn like this. Mr. Lopez stopped and explained that he was blowing into a ram's horn also called a shofar. People in Bible times blew the horn to get the attention of people near and far. Let's read together. The priests also blew the shofar to signal a holy day where we get our word holiday. Micah whispered to Claire. Wow, that sure would get my attention. Together, Mr. Lopez went on to explain that there was a special day on which God told the priests to blow the shofar. God didn't give this day a name, 
that it became known as the Feast of Trumpets. The people were to rest on this day just like they would if it were the Sabbath. In Leviticus 23, God says that this day was to be a day to remember, but it does not say what the people were to remember. Mr. Lopez said that he likes to remember on this day all the ways God has been faithful to him and his family. Mr. Lopez told the class that some people celebrate this day by eating apple slices dipped in honey. As he handed out the special snack, Claire told Micah she thought this was a strange way to celebrate. Together? Micah agreed, but they both enjoyed their sweet apple treat. Perfect. Okay, did you know what a shofar was? So this is what a shofar looks like. This is what Mr. Lopez was blowing into and it makes a loud sound. So let's answer the questions in narration practice. Number one, what did the children hear on their way to class? What did they hear? They heard the sound of the shofar. They thought it was maybe a trumpet, right? Number two. What holiday did Mr. Lopez teach the class about? What was it? It was the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, and number three, how did the class celebrate? They celebrated with the sweet apple treat. Yes, would you like to eat something like this? I wonder what it tastes like. Okay, let's continue to the next page together. Page 54. So here we can do some memorization. Mr. Lopez told the class that the Feast of Trumpets is described in Leviticus 23 verse 24. So let's read this together. Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first of the month, you shall have a rest, a reminder by blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Shall we read it one more time together? Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first of the month, you shall have a rest, a reminder, by blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Great, so now you can take some time to try to memorize this verse. So you can pause the video and then try to memorize it, try to repeat it and see if you remember how to say it. So you can pause the video now and do this and then together we will do this exercise. So pause the video now. Okay, if you have finished memorizing the verse or at least trying, we can do some grouping. Here are different words in each category. Which word in each row doesn't belong? Circle it. So let's do the first one together. Number one, jump, toss, bowl, 
run. Which word do you think doesn't belong to this row? Do you, do you have the answer? Ball doesn't belong. Why doesn't it belong? Because jump, toss and run are all actions. They are all verbs. But ball, ball is not an action or a verb. This is just a noun. This is just an object. So this one doesn't belong. Okay, do you want to try number two, three and four alone? You can do this and then let's check together. So you can pause the video now. Okay, did you finish? Did you pause the video? Do you have the answers? I hope you do. Okay, let's check together what the answers were. First one we already did together. Second, why lion? All the other animals eat grass, right? But the lion eats meat. Number three, why is shoe the odd one? What are these? These are all games, right? So shoe doesn't belong because shoe is not a game. And number four, why is it flower? Because flower is a general name, but rose, tulip and peony, they are all specific names, really specific flowers. So this one doesn't belong. Great, good job. Let's continue now to the next page. On this page, we will be talking about plural nouns. Do you remember what a plural noun is? Yes, it is when there is more than one person, place or thing. So there is more than one. Let's study the examples. So for some words, they have different endings. Some in plural take S, but some take ES. So we are looking at words that end in Y and end in O. So what happens with vowels ending in Y? Let's look at this example. Boy. If I want to say boy, one boy, two, what is the plural? It ends in Y, so I add S, like here. In the example, it says add S. For example, here they have key, keys. So whenever you see Y at the end, you add S. Now let's have a look at words that end in O. So we need to check what is the letter before the O. So in the example, it's written radio. Here we have the O, but what letter is before? Is it a consonant or a vowel? It's a vowel, okay. So let's check vowel plus O vowel plus O, what do we do? We add S, very good. But then we have one last example, consonant plus O. So like here we have hero. As you can see, we have O and before O we have R. What is R? 
R is a consonant. And what does it say here? When we have consonant plus O, we add ES. All right? ES. Great. Good job. So now we can do the exercise and try to practice. Let's do number one together. So number one, we have toy. What is the last letter? Letter Y. So what do we do with letter Y? We add S. Yes. So you just add S in the example. Okay, now you can do number two, three, four, five, and six alone. Remember to look at the examples here and then let's check together. Are you ready? Okay, so you can pause the video and do this, then we check. Did you pause the video? Did you finish? Great. Let's look at the answers. So here, to tornadoes for number two. It ends in O. And before that, we have D. It's a consonant. So consonant plus O, ES. Yes. Number three. Zoo. So we have the last letter O. What is behind the O? Another O. What is O? Is it a consonant or a vowel? It's a vowel. Yes. So S. Great. And you can check the next answers. It's the same principle. Did you get them right? Okay. If you need more time to check, you can pause the video. Otherwise, let's continue together. So this is what it's like for most words, but there are two exceptions to this rule. Let's look at them together. Piano. So we have O at the end. And be before that, we have a Consonant. N is a consonant. So usually consonant plus O has ES, right? But what do you see here? There's only S. So pianos is an exception. Then photo. Photos. Again, we have O at the end. But before that, we have T. T is a consonant. So Normally we should have ES, but here we only have S. So these are the two exceptions. You can write the two plural words in here, pianos and photos. And then when you finish writing the words, you can write a sentence here using two of the plural words that we studied. So what two of these words. You can pause the video to do this and then we can quickly look together at your answers. So let's see what answers you have. So here we wrote pianos, photos, that's we just copy this. And then here, my sentence is, the toys are on the pianos. So what are the two plural words? They are toys and pianos. Yes. And did you see, I have a capital letter at the beginning and I have a punctuation mark at the end. Did you do that too? Okay, good. What were your two words? Do you have the same as me or do you have something different? 
If you have something different, that's fine, as long as they are plural. Good job. Okay, then we can continue together. On page 56, we are going to talk about types of sentences. Do you remember the different kinds of punctuation we use at the end of a sentence? Yes, we use a period, a question mark, or an exclamation point. So today we will look at four different types of sentences. So let's read their names together. The first one is imperative. Let's say it together. Imperative imperative. Good. So this type of sentence is a command and it ends with a period. Here is an example. Eat your soup. Period. This is a command. I am telling you to do something. That's what it is. Imperative sentences is when someone tells someone else to do something. They end with a period. Next we have declarative. Can you say with me? Declarative. Again, declarative. Very good. It's difficult words. What is a declarative sentence? It is a statement and it ends with a period too. So here's an example. Sarah is 10 years old. So this is just an information, just someone saying something, just something normal, just any information. Or I like spaghetti. This is information. So these are declarative sentences with the period. Next we have exclamatory. Can you say it with me? Exclamatory. Exclamatory. These sentences have emotion. It is an exclamation and they end with an exclamation point. So whenever you say something with emotion, so maybe you are really angry or you are really happy, something like that, then you can use an exclamation point and it's an exclamatory sentence. In the, in the example we have, go away. Okay, maybe you say this to your friend or your sister, your brother, go away. And then you can use the exclamation point. Next we have interrogative. Let's say it together. Interrogative. Interrogative. Very good. Let's look at the example. Who took my pen? So this is a question and every question ends in a question mark. Okay, so whenever you have a question, it is an interrogative sentence. Who took my pen? Or where is the, the bathroom? Or can I, have, can I have a pencil or an eraser? This is an interrogative sentence. So now let's look at the sentences here. Let's see if you know what sentences they are. Let's do number one together. Why did the priest blow the shofar? Is this an imperative sentence, declarative, exclamatory, or interrogative? Can you see what is at the end? There is a question mark. Okay, so which type of sentence has a question mark? 
it is the interrogative sentence. So, because it's interrogative, here you can write I N for interrogative. So here you see I M for imperative, D for declarative, E for exclamatory, and I N for interrogative. So you can write them here. And I'll give you a bit of time now to, to do these last three sentences. Try to see what they are. So you can pause the video now to do this and then let's check together your answers. Are you ready to check the answers? If you didn't finish then pause the video and finish and if you finish let's look together. Number one was interrogative. Number two, I like apple slices dipped in honey. This is just information. Okay, so declarative. Number three, stop that dog. Of course it is exclamatory and we have an exclamation point at the end. And last, bring me that book. This is a command. Someone is telling someone else to do something. So imperative. Did you get them right? Okay, good job. So now if you got them right, we can continue together to the next page. On this page, let's talk about interjections. An interjection is a word that expresses emotion or feeling. Often it is found at the beginning of a sentence and followed with an exclamation point. So it's exclamatory. Let's look at the example. Wow, I read the whole book today. Do you see? This is the interjection. Wow. Do you often say wow? Okay. And you see after wow there is an exclamation point. There is often an exclamation point after interjections, but not always. So let's look at these sentences. Let's see, can you find the interjections? Let's do number five together. Oops, I dropped the plate. What is the interjection? It is, whoops, right? Okay, good job. Now you can do six and seven. Try to find the interjection. Did you find them? Okay, so let's check together the answers. So number six. Oh, were you in line? O oh is the interjection. And you see there is no exclamation point after. And seven. Hey, don't touch the hot stove. Hey is the interjection. Very good. Now you can write a sentence using an interjection. So you can choose one of these if you like. Wow, whoops, oh, hey. Okay, you can choose one and write a sentence. I have an example for you. Wow, the sky looks beautiful. This is my example, and you can try to do something else. So remember, just choose one of these words and then finish the sentence. You can pause the video if you need time to do this, 
and I will continue now to page 58. As always, we are not going to do this together, but you can read pages 18 to 19 of 101 favorite stories from the Bible. Then you can answer the questions on page 19. When you finish that, you can also fill this page. You can ask a friend or your parent or someone if you need any help with this. So now you can pause the video to do this or stop the video and then I will continue to the next page. Now we are look looking at long I sound words for the spelling practice. Let's learn to spell these words. Let's read them together. Bike. Child. Dime. Hydrant. July. Light. Pilot. Quiet. Sigh. Sign. Now you can create your own word search with your spelling words. So let's look at the example. Here the person put the spelling words in different places and then they put any letters in between. So now you can make your own word search with these words, just write them wherever you want, here or here, and then fill in with any letter that you want. So let's look together. I have an example. I wrote bike here, but you can write it wherever you like. Then I wrote child like this and July the other way. And then remember for the rest of the letters, you can just write whatever you like. For example, A, X, B, H, U, W, L, B. You can write any letter. So you can take time to do that and then at the end write a, a fun sentence using at least two of your spelling words. Be sure to start your sentence with a capital letter and end it with a punctuation mark. So this is my sentence. Be quiet when the child sleeps. So what are the two words? The spelling words are quiet and child. And then remember punctuation and capital letter. And then you can write your own sentence. Okay, so do this, your own word search, and then write your sentence. When you finish, if you like, you can also do the optional activities on page 60 if you need more practice. And that's it for this lesson. So finish this. And I will see you in the next lesson. So see you there. I want to welcome you to lesson six today. Do you see what a nice picture we have on the front of our lesson? So let's have a look at it and do some observation skills. Can you see who is the artist of this picture? Do you see a name somewhere? The artist is Kochi-san. And number two, what is the mouse doing? Yes, it is 
holding a dandelion. It is looking into the sky. It is just standing there. Mm -hmm. And what things do you see in the picture? Okay, yes, there is a mouse. There are some dandelions. Some of them are going away in the wind. There is some grass. There is a blue sky. There are some clouds. Do you see anything else? Okay, question number four. What colors are used in this picture? Of course, there is blue. Yes, there is some green. Brown. A little bit of purple in here. White. Light blue and white. Yes, do you see anything else? Okay, last question. How does this picture make you feel? For me, it makes me feel really peaceful when I see this picture. I feel like I can relax. How about you? Okay, now it's time to leave this lovely picture and go to the next page, page 62. On this page, we are going to do some story writing. So remember the picture of the mouse? Here is one line that we are going to read together about the mouse. Let's read it. It was a warm summer day when the mouse found a field of dandelion flowers gone to seed. Okay, so this is the first sentence of a story. Now on your page, you see that there are many lines. So you can use those lines to finish this story about the mouse. So just continue what, what is written here and then write a next sentence. So you can do this now. Uh, if you need to, you can pause the video to do it. And then we will continue together on the next page. So you can pause the video now and I will already go to the next page. On page 63, we are going to talk about plural nouns. Do you remember what a plural noun, noun is? Yes, a plural noun means more than one person, place or thing. So there could be two, three, four, ten, hundred, a thousand, more than one. So last time we talked about the ending with O and how we add S or ES. Now we are going to look at endings in Y or F or FE. So let's look first at consonant plus Y. If the noun ends in a consonant plus Y, like here, so here we have Y and just before we have letter T, right? And letter T is a consonant. So if we have this case, then what happens? The Y becomes IES in the plural. So we take away the Y and we add IES. Same here with the word baby. Again, we have Y at the end and just before we have a consonant. It then becomes babies. 
the, uh, the Y is gone and we have IES. Now let's look at F or FE. If the noun ends in an F or FE, we change the F or FE to a V. And we add ES to the end to make it plural. So here we have F in singular, but in plural F becomes VES and FE becomes VES also. Here we have the examples. So here we have the ending with F. Here we have the ending with FE. So wolf and life. Wolf becomes wolves, V-E-S, and life becomes lives, also V-E-S. All right, now let's practice. Here are some words. City, leaf, country, knife. Change these words to make them plural. So make sure you look at the ending and you can use this or these examples to help you know what ending to write. So you can pause the video now and do this and then let's check the answers together. Did you finish? Good job! Okay, so we can check the answers. Ready? Let's go. So city, Y, ends in I-E-S, same as party, parties. Leaf, F becomes V-E-S, leaves, country, countries, I-E-S, and knife, knives. Did you get it right? Great. Now, there are two exceptions to this rule, so be careful. Here we have the word roof, so it ends in F, but it doesn't become V-E-S. It stays F and we just add one S. And the same with cliff, we just add S at the end also. So remember, roof and cliff they only have plus S, no change in letter. So now you can just write these two words here, the exceptions. Are you ready to move on? Let's go. On this page, let's talk about commas. Do you remember what a comma is? It is this shape. Okay, so we use commas when we write a list of things in a sentence. A comma comes after each item in a list. So let's study the commas in this sentence and let's circle them. Let's read it together. The mouse looked at the grass, clouds and the night sky. So here we have a list of three things. We have grass, clouds, and we have the night sky. So when we have a list like this of three or four or like that things, we put commas. So let's also underline the commas. There are two. So we put it in between the words in the list. Do we put a comma here before the, the word starts, before the list? 
No, we don't. So after the first word in the list, you can put your comma. Also be careful when we have and, the comma comes before and, not after. So be careful with that. So now try to write a sentence here with a list separated by commas. I will give you another example. Here is my sentence. I need to buy cheese, milk and some fruit. This is my sentence. So again, we have the list with three words. Cheese, milk and some fruit. And the commas again are here and here. So now your turn and try to write your own sentence. You can pause the video to do this if you like. And then let's look at this together. Ready to move on? If not, then just pause the video. So this is one option to use the comma with a list of things. But there are also other cases, like when we address someone, when we say someone's name. So in the first sentence, there is a person's name at the beginning of the sentence. And the comma comes after the name. So let's read it. Claire. Please bring the apples here. So remember, if we call someone, hey, Claire, Claire, please bring the apples here. The comma comes after, when the name is at the beginning. Let's look at an other sentence. Sometimes the name comes in the middle of a sentence, like here. Let's read. You, God, are worthy of praise. So what do you see here? We have God in the middle, not at the beginning. And where are the commas? Yes, the commas are before and after the name. So remember this. When it's in the middle of a sentence, we have two commas. Now let's look at the last case. This time the name is at the end of a sentence. So let's read it. Bring the honey over here, Micah. Where is the comma? Yes, the comma is before the name. So every time you have the name at the end of the sentence, the comma is before. Okay? So let's move to the next page and try to practice a little bit. Let's move to page 65. On page 65, there are three sentences. Now it's your turn. Try to put a comma where they go in the sentences. So. Remember first, find the name and then look, is the name at the beginning, in the middle or at the end of the sentence and then put your commas. So you can pause the video and do this and then let's check the answers together. Are you ready to check the answers? If not, pause the video. Okay, let's check. In the first sentence, the name is at the end, so the comma comes before. In the second one, the name is at the beginning, so the comma comes after. 
And in the third one, the name is in the middle, so we put a comma before and after the name. Good? Great. Okay, now we are going to write a sentence addressing someone. I already wrote a sentence. My sentence says, Sally, where are the cookies? This is my sentence. So where is the name? The name is at the beginning. So my comma is here. And remember when you do this, remember the capital letter and remember also the punctuation mark. So now it's your turn. You can write this kind of sentence with someone's name and the rest of the sentence. So you can pause the video to do this and I will continue to page 66. On this page, we have our reading comprehension. As always, this is something you do alone or with a friend, a teacher or with a parent. So read pages 20 to 21 of 100 favorite stories from the Bible and then answer the questions on page 21. When you finish that, you can also do the page, page 66 and copy the picture on page 21. You can pause or stop the video to do this and I'm already going to page 67 of our book. On this page we are going to do our spelling practice. This time we will work on long O sound words. So let's learn to spell these words. Let's read them together first. Alone, cold, grow, hope, moan, most, open, Road, woke, yellow. Great. And now it is your turn to write the spelling words in the correct boxes. So what do you need to check for this? You need to check where are the letters going. For example, here, what letter goes down? Do you see any? There is G from grow and there is Y from yellow. Those go down. But are there enough letters for yellow? No, there are not enough letters. So what word is this? Yes, this word, first one is grow. Okay, great. So now you can finish. So finish all the boxes until number 10. Then you can also write a fun sentence using at least two of your spelling words here. So just write a fun sentence here. So to do this, you can pause the video and then let's check our answers together. So you can pause your video now. Did you finish? Are you ready to check the answers? If you didn't, then you need to try to pause the video again and finish. So let's check. Here are the answers. First is grow, second road, third moan, four, cold, five, hope, six, alone, seven, woke, eight, most, nine, 
yellow, 10, open. And did you write also a fun sentence with your spelling words? This is my sentence. I am alone in the cold. So sad, right? <laughs> okay, what are my two words? My two words are alone and cold. And what did I do? What did I do at the beginning? I have a capital letter. And what about at the end? I have a punctuation mark. Did you do the same? Okay. So if you didn't finish to check your answers, you can pause the video to do that. When you finish checking, you can move to the next page if you like, where there are some optional activities and you can practice writing these spelling words again. So you can do this still. And I will see you in the next video then. So bye.